I've really enjoyed watching CF Montreal play this season for a couple different reasons. One, they're an exciting team to watch, and two, they have a lot of talented Canadian players on their side, specifically Canadian men's national team players. So what we're going to do today is we're going to head over to FIFA 22 and we're going to play the 2022 MLS season until CF Montreal wins the MLS Cup. But there's going to be some interesting rules. For my first season, I get to add two Canadian men's national team players in the 60 overalls. If I lose that one, I get to come back and I get to add two more in the 70 overall. And if I lose that, I get to add two more in the 80s. And if I lose that one as well, then I can just start adding wherever I want. So I basically will have an entire Canadian men's national team starting 11 for CF Montreal. So before we get into season number one, let's see which players I'm going to grab. The first player who's going to join up with CF Montreal for season number one is going to be Samuel Adekubi at a 69 rating. Will be pretty decent for the left back position. The second player to be joining up with CF Montreal is going to be Steven Victoria. And I know I had to do it. Reconnect, Alistair Johnson, Kamal Miller, and Steven Victoria. Career mode is about to begin. CF Montreal. We got some decent board expectations. You don't have a lot of expectations in, in us. Domestic success, low. Continental success, low. Brand exposure, low. Financial, medium. Youth development, high. That's going to be annoying. I just got to make sure I don't get fired. But let's see what we can do in our first season. All right, let's take a look now. Wilfred Nantz, he's got two extra Canadian men's national team players to take a look at. I think this season we're going to play the 3-4-2-1. I like that system. We're going to go with it. But look at this reunion here. I know Waterman is Canadian. I'm sorry, my man. But... I had to do it. We got the leadership coming in. We got Victoria. We got Alistair Johnston. And we got Kamal Miller. Piet Wanyama in the middle. We got ZBG out at right wing back. Schwanier, my man. You'll get there when your time is ready. But we got Adakubi back in. Going up there as a left wing back. Mihailovic, Torres, and Kyoto. It's a decent little team. Decent little team. I'm assuming for the next updates, if we don't win this one, we'll probably be looking towards the top. Because I also got to make sure they're all pretty much Canadian. So the next two positions, we'll have to take out players who are not Canadian. But that's the that's what the team's looking like so far. So let's sim the entire season and see how we do. All right, we've simmed all of season one. And immediately, <laughs> you see the 46. Wilfred Nancy, this tells me that we've had a brutal, brutal season. So... Let's take a look at how things stand. We'll go over to the standings and take a look. So in the Eastern Conference, New England, as I mean, as you guess you'd maybe expect, absolutely ran over the league with 69 points. Columbus, Inter Miami, a little surprising there. Orlando, New York Red Bulls, New York City, Atlanta round out the uh, the playoff position. So let's see how far down we fell with that 46 confidence rating we got from the board as Nashville, Philadelphia, Toronto. So we finished in 11th. Right under Toronto, we had 7 wins, 11 draws, 16 losses, 44 goals for 69. I signed two defenders, and Adekubi and Vittoria had a difficult season and minus 25 goal differential, 32 points. Wow. Cincinnati somehow figured out a way to get below us. So did Chicago Fire, and so did DC. Brutal, brutal season overall for, for CF Montreal. We did not qualify for the playoffs. We did not win the MLS Cup. So we start from scratch. We're going to go into this same season, but we're going to add two players in the 70s. So let's go see who I'm going to sign. Now let's take a look at how the two players we brought in at the beginning of the season did. We're going to start with Samuel Adekubi. He only featured in 15 matches. He scored one goal, zero assists, didn't have any yellow cards or red cards. It overall wasn't a very impactful season for Adekubi. So let's see if maybe Vittori did a little better. I can confirm that Vittori did not do any better. He started nine matches, zero goals, zero assists, one clean sheet with zero red cards, zero yellow cards. Wow. Our two supposed to be impact players must have had some injury riddled seasons because they didn't do too much, but they will have a second chance in season two. So hopefully they can maybe build on what they did this season. We had a very poor season one, did not go our way. We needed to get two big signings to come in if we want any chance of making the playoffs, let alone winning MLS Cup. So now we got our 260s in and Adekubi and Vittoria. Now it's time to bring in the 270s. And these are the two players we got. We got Kyle Laren coming in from Besiktas at a 74 overall. 
And we got Stefan Ustakio coming in from Porto at a 76. This should definitely help balance out the team a little bit and hopefully go for a much more competitive season. After the disgraceful season of season one, we are, we are switching things up. We're switching up to the 4-4-2. I mean, John Herdman would be proud, but this is what the team's going to be looking like going into this season. We got Brezza and Net. Alistair Johnson will be at right back with Vittoria and Kamal Miller as our two center backs. Adekubi at left back. Piet was very, very persuasive to make sure that he played in a proper CDM. So we got Samuel Piet with Ustaki as our two CDMs. We got ZBG going a little further up the pitch as a right mid with Mihailovic over on the left mid. And then our two strikers is Kyoto and Kyle Laren. That's a tasty look inside. Let's, at the very least, hope this side can make the playoffs this season. Eight matches into season two. Just wanted to highlight something quickly because I just saw that we have not lost yet. We're top of the Eastern Conference. Eight matches played, 18 points. And on top of that, just to make things, you know, even better. And just wanted to show a cheeky little manager award for uh, Will for Nancy with the excellent job he's doing so far. We've stopped the sim here on decision day. And it's a good thing we did because things are far from secure. I mean, we're at a 69 rating, so clearly we haven't listened to a few of the board's expectations, but that's fine. The number one expectation is to get into the playoffs, and it looks like we are right now. It's going to get close. Let's sim our last match of the season against Orlando City to see if Montreal will, in fact, qualify for this year's playoffs. All right, let's see how we do. I think at least a point will do. And we draw. Kyle Laren. Our boy, curious to see how we did this season. After that draw, let's take a look if we did qualify, and it does look like we did. Looks like we were taking on Orlando in the first round of playoffs. So let's see how indeed the Eastern Conference played out. As in first is New England back to back. I mean, another massive season, man. They're 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 flying. Atlanta, Orlando, Philadelphia, Columbus, CF Montreal in six, and NYCFC rounding it out. We finished with a 12, 12, and 10 record. 44 goals for, 44 against, way better than our 69 goals we conceded in our first season. Inter, New York, Red Bulls, Chicago, DC, Nashville, Cincinnati, and TFC don't qualify. So, not too bad there. We'll, we'll play out, then we'll take a look at the stats and see how the guys did. This is it. This is our do or die match. Win, we move on. Lose, we are eliminated. Taking on Orlando City. We're still going in that 4-4-2 system. Looks like all the guys are in pretty good form except for ZBG. But, I mean, we forced him to play a little bit further up the pitch. He gets it. He's fine. But let's see how we do. Are we going to be moving on or are we going to be crashing out and going into our third attempt of trying to win CF Montreal, the MLS Cup? Quick sim. It's all right. Progression, guys. Progression. 2-1 win for Orlando City. Kyle Laren scored, but it wasn't enough as Perea got two. And that is it. CF Montreal crash out in the first round of playoffs. Now, there's no question about it that our second season went far better than our first. We, we qualified for the playoffs. Yes, we lost in the first round, but we're making steps. So let's take a look at how the two new signings we had did, as well as the two original signings. We're going to start with Kyle Laren, as you guys can see. 35 matches played. 13 goals, 3 assists. Not a bad showing for him. You see Kyoto and Mihailovic doing their parts as well. But, I mean, not a ton of goal scoring outside of Kyoto and Laren, to be honest. But if we go down, we take a look at Stefan Ustakio, played in 34 matches, had one goal, four assists. Definitely, I mean, he definitely did his part. I'm gonna not going to lie. But the two original signs we had is Samuel Adekubi had a much better season, definitely didn't get injured like his first season, playing in 28 matches, getting in there with a goal as well. And then taking a look at Vittoria, who, once again, I mean, he had a decent chunk of matches, 26, more than the original one. So it, those two didn't suffer with injuries at all. No goals, no no assists as well, but a big part of it at the back. So, attempt two was, was much better. I mean, qualifying for the playoffs, yes, we lost in the first round, but the definitely impact players we had from the Canadian national team. So now it's time to sign two more. On to attempt number three, and with it, we get to sign two more Canadian national team players, this time in the 80 overalls. You know who they are. There, there's, there's only two. We signed Alfonso Davies from Bayern as well as Jonathan David from Lille. So hopefully... This is enough to put us over the line. Otherwise, we're going to have to go just slowly starting to bring in players like maybe like Crepo. So I'm hoping this is enough. It should be. Let's see how we can do. Now, let's see how I'm going to line up CF Montreal. It's our third attempt, as you guys know, but it's our first attempt using an all Canadian starting 11. Look at this. I mean, it's basically our Canadian national team, a few pieces here and there. But we're lining up in the 4 4 2 again. I think it did us well last season. Brez is going to be in net. We got Johnson at right back. Vittoria and Kamal Miller are two center backs. Adekubi at left back. 
ZBG still a little bit further up the pitch as our, as our right midfielder. We got Piat Eustachio as our two center mids. And then Alfonso Davies, there's a wild card coming in, playing at a left mid. And then Jonathan David and Kyle Lahren as our two strikers. This team should be enough to win MLS Cup. And if it's not, I think Wilfred Nancy and I will be out of a job. We are back here for our third attempt on decision day. And I was expecting, honestly, to be in the top three of the East. I'm, I'm pretty surprised. We're in seventh place right now on 49 points. It looks like we basically need to win to guarantee that we're going to make the playoffs. It's a little ridiculous. Let's go into the standings and take a look. Davies, David, come on, man. I know maybe you're just saving for the playoffs. I'm hoping you are, but this is, once again, New England has just run away. All three times we've done this, they've been the best team by a good margin. Orlando into Miami for some reason is good in this. Philadelphia, New York Red Bulls, New York City FC, and then it's us, DC, Toronto battling out for this last spot. So, Let's see what we can do. It's all going to go on to this final sim. CF Montreal, Orlando. Are we going to actually qualify the playoffs or are we going to go into a fourth season? <laughs> oh my, I did not even see that. Alfonso Davies suspended for decision day. One of the biggest matches of the season. Just caught my attention. Not making things any easier. Let's hope. I'm assuming Schwanier is going to be playing in there. So let's just hope my boy can step up and let's see how we do. There we go. CF Montreal does it the hard way. I see. I mean, David got substituted in the first half. Interesting decision. Hopefully not injured. Atacudi picks up a red. We score a minute later. Laren puts it to bed. 2-0. That should be enough to put Montreal to the playoffs. So this is the way the standings rounded out in the East with New England taking it as expected. They took it all three times so far. Inter. Red Bulls got up to third. Orlando, Philadelphia. We finished in six tfc squeaks in in seventh we had a 15 7 and 12 record 57 goals for 49 against still a little leaky at the back but we're taking on new york red bulls in the first round to see if we move on it's gonna be an interesting one this is where we fell short in our second attempt so let's hope that jonathan david and the boys can do a little bit better but let's first take a look at how jonathan david and alfonso davies actually did this season in our third attempt, let's take a look at how our six new additions has, have done for us. Starting things off with Jonathan David, as you'd expect, the man found the back of the net. 34 appearances, 16 goals, 7 assists. Not bad for Jonathan David. Expected a little bit more, but it's fine. Kyle Lahren as well had 12 goals, 0 assists. Decent performance as well. Alfonso Davies playing 32 matches, 4 goals, 3 assists. A lot of these guys are getting a ton of game time. Ustachio playing 34 matches, 3 goals, 1 assist. All 3 free kicks, we know it. Got to go down a little bit more and try to find Samuel Adekubi, who played in 23, so not as many as you'd expect with zero goals, one assist. Taking a look now at Stephen Vittoria, only played in four matches. I think Waterman took him out, so that's fine. He got replaced by, by Joel Waterman, so I mean, it is fine. Vittoria was there for leadership purposes, so no problem with that. Didn't find the back of the net. In our first round playoff match, we're taking on New York Red Bulls. We do have Samuel Adekubi, who's out with a red. So let's hope probably Schwanier is able to pick up the pieces at the left back position. But the guys look in good shape, except for maybe the ZBG. So let's see how we can do, if we can move on to the next round or not. Quick sim. And they find a way to do it. 2-1 win. And we got, an, got another red card. Eight minutes in, the CF Montreal side is doing it really the hard way. Going down one nothing, but Kyle Lair on the 41st and then on the 76th, despite all the odds, put CF Montreal to the next round. What a performance from Montreal. Now let's take a look at the first round results. As you guys know, CF Montreal moves on. Philadelphia takes down Orlando. Timbers take down DC. Over in the West, we see LAFC taking out Houston. Minnesota taking out Sporting. And Inter Miami with a big performance taking down TSC which sets up the conference semifinals where a match is, two matches have actually have already been played. New England beat Philadelphia, it's 2-2 and they win 4-3 on penalties. And then Timbers take out LAFC 3-2. We have a date with Inter Miami while Sounders take on Minnesota United. So let's go see how we do against Inter. Now it's devastating news that Ustachio has got a red card. If it was up to me, I mean it's not C's decision, but if it was up to me, I'd start as Smelcone. So I'm going to let him take the reins. He gets to pick who starts, but let's take a look. It's Montreal. It's Inter. Will we move on to the next round or is this the end? Yeah, do nothing win for CF Montreal. 
This one looked a little more straightforward. ZBG finds a back of the net on the 42nd minute. And then Samuel Adekubi with one of those lightning runs that we know he can do so well. Finds a way to send Montreal to the next round. Let's go see who we got a date with next. For the conference semifinals, you guys already saw the first two results. CF Montreal, as you guys also saw, moved on 2 0 winners over Inter Miami. And Minnesota upset Sounders 1 0 to set up the conference finals, where it's CF Montreal and New England. New England has been unreal in all three of these attempts, so I'm a little nervous for that one. And Timbers have a date with Minnesota. Let's go see if we can cause an upset. Now we have a fully available squad to us, thankfully. It's interesting, unfortunately, Vittoria. I mean, I guess he's joined the coaching staff as well with me, Nancy. I mean, it's, it's fine. We got Pantamis in net, and as I forgot to mention to you guys, Brezza was was taken back from to Bologna. I mean, it's, it's, they recalled him, so it's fine. Pantamis has taken his game to a new level. I have full faith in him. Alistair Johnson, Waterman, Miller, Adekubi, ZBG, Eustachio, Piet, Davies, Laren, David. Full strength. This is what the team is looking like against a very tricky New England side. Let's see how the boys can do. Quick sim. Do it. And they find a way on penalties. Let's take a look how this one went. No oh, early start for New England to make it one nothing in the first minute. Davies on the 63rd. Let's see Sebastian Legette finds a way through on the 74th. But Davies with his brace on the 82nd minute sends it to extra time. Nothing. And then let's see who the boys are. Did we score all five of ours? Looks like we did. David was first. Then Laren, Davies, Alistair Johnson, they miss, we miss. Legette scores, ZBG finds the back in the net, they miss again. And that was it. Big performance from CF Montreal. They win 5-4 on penalties to set up a date for the MLS Cup. And this is how the conference final played out. CF Montreal winning on penalties, sending us to the final to take on Portland Timbers, who close 2-1 win over Minnesota sets up the MLS Finals December 5th, 2021. Now, we have a very full strength squad again. No red cards, no suspensions, nothing we gotta worry about. We're lining up in our 4 4 2. This could be a historical moment for CF Montreal. Pantamis in net, Alistair Johnson right back, Waterman Miller, two center backs. Look at Waterman though, good for him. The Canadian finds a way to, to put Victoria in the sideline. Adakubi, ZBG at right mid, Davies left mid, Piet rocking the captain's armband, a big leader all year long with Eustachio and David and Laren up front. It's a good looking side. And they're taking on some incredible kits, I'm not going to lie, with uh, Portland Timbers. But let's see if we can bring the cup to Canada. Yes! CF Montreal have won it from an unlikely source. Torres comes off the bench for Jonathan David on the 55th minute. He puts up a brace. Chara brings one back late, but it's not enough. CF Montreal 2-1 winners against the Portland Timbers to lift. The MLS Cup. Oh, that was a journey. That was it. Just took six Canadian men's national team players to sign for CF Montreal or get moved over to CF Montreal to win this thing. Look at that, Wilfred Nancy is CF Montreal. The 90%. They're, they're, they're at 90%. They're ninety percent. They're very satisfied with us. And there you guys have it, Wilfred Nancy, Alfonso Davies celebrating the MLS Cup win. It didn't take that much. It took us moving over six Canadian men's national team players and three attempts but we got there we got the job done and we brought cf montreal the 2021 mls cup it's been a fun little video hopefully you guys did enjoy it as always and if you did be sure to drop a like drop a sub as well guys because we're closing on 50,000 subscribers and let me know down below in the comment sections if you think that cf montreal can win the mls cup this year and also let me know if you think that they're going to sign any canadians could be someone playing overseas someone at home like maybe Raheem Edwards one day or Dane St. Clair. Let me know, guys. And until next time, take care and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers, friends.